Hello there. Is that Rob? It is, yes. Is that Des? It is indeed. Afternoon to you, Rob. Afternoon to you as well. Do you know, out of all the people I've interviewed in all my entire career broadcasting, I've always, and I'm not saying this because he's on the phone here, but I've always wanted to interview Des O'Connor. Uh. And, and you've made my day now, Des, because you're here. Oh, thank you, Rob. Very nice to say that for me. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> it is. I've been a fan because I, I always had this vision that you were from Birmingham, and I used to live in Birmingham, but it's not true, is it? Because you've... You were from the East End, wasn't you? I was born in the East End of London. I, I lived for a little while when I lived. I used to visit a place called Dudley uh, years ago. In the West my, Midlands. In, in, you know, where they talk like that. It's lovely to be in Dudley, you know. Yeah. And uh, that was for a while, for about uh, two or three years. But, um, no, I was born in the East End of London. I'm a Cockney. But <laughs> and is it true that you went to live in Northampton, though? Is that where you was evacuated or something, to Northampton? Yeah, they, they, it was starting to get personal. We lived in three houses, and they all got bombed. And I think it was Hitler versus us. So my dad said, it's time we left. It's getting too close. <laughs> so we moved up to Northampton, and, and I lived there for oh, 10, 12 years. In fact, my parents, till the day they passed away, were still living there. So they never went back to the East End. All right, OK. And talk about Northampton. <laughs> I've got uh, a listener on the phone here who used to live in Northampton, and she knows you as well. Oh? Yes. Uh, let me just put you through, and hopefully <laughs> we should get to uh, Ruth here. Uh, oh, she's gone. Uh, We've had a problem with the phone there. Don't know what happened there. I am back. Yes, you're back. (laughs) (laughs) What happened to Ruth? (laughs) I don't know. She disappeared. We're ruthless. Yeah, I don't know. Well, Ruth was said said that uh, she used to work in a a club or a pub that she used to go into. Well, it could well be. I, I didn't always stay indoors in Northampton. I, I grew, grew to be a young man from the age of 18 to 21. I was always visiting my dad, going with my dad to the pubs and things like that. So she, she may well have known me. I yeah. don't know. But I also played semi-pro football for a couple of years for Northampton. That's probably what it was then, yeah. yes. Yeah. We never did play at Preston. Never went to a deep back. <laughs> never, yeah. But you're coming closer to uh, Preston, aren't you? You're coming in uh, November to Lancaster. Yeah, do you know, I've never played Lancaster. I've never played Colne. Which I'm going to Cone, and I've never I've played real, yes, yeah, did a Sunday concert there. So that's my northwest little. I'm trying to get to every little part of the country if we can, and that's our northwest gigs. So I'm looking forward to that. You know, um, I always find they like to laugh up there. They, you know, the good crowd. So, and when I get on a live show, that's when I'm happiest. I mean, TV's fine, making records is fine, and DVDs and all those things. But give me that live crowd, and that's when. You know, it's real show business for me. It's a good test as well. You're up there for two and a half hours or something by yourself, apart from the musicians. And it's a real good test. I'm looking forward to that. And you, you've had some <laughs> great grounding, haven't you? Because you played in Glasgow, didn't you? The famous uh, theatre in Glasgow when you started off. There's a silence when you say that word, Glasgow Empire. <laughs> no one told me, because I was in show business about half an hour when I went there, no one told me that the national sport of Scotland was go to the Empire on a Friday night and wait for the English comic. <laughs> 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 Away and catch your bus. <laughs> <laughs> so how long did you do then? Was well, you on stage for a, how long for? Well, it was a week's it was a week's gig, but on the Thursday night first house, I mean, I could actually hear the silence. Three thousand people and not one person laughing. It's a pretty terrifying experience because if a Scot, you know, like see Big Jimmy, see see you, you know, yeah. when they talk, when I was talking faster than that, and I'm sure the good Scots hadn't got a clue what I was talking about. I was talking, it was, a, and I, I, I tell myself, you've just told that joke. No, I haven't. Yes, you have. Well, you won't know to get the end because I didn't get a laugh first. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, so I just threw a, a, a faint and went down in a heap on, on the on the stage. I'll never get the musical director pulled himself up and said, is this in the act? <laughs> I said, no, I've fainted. Get me off. <laughs> they, they dragged me. No kidding, Rob. Yeah. Up through the back of the curtains. Not left or right. I didn't leave the stage where you know. I was dragged up from the back. <clears throat> and... Uh, Eric Morecambe told people after that I was the first comic to sell advertising space on the soles of my shoes. I <laughs> know, <laughs> <laughs> oh, glad to go. But you see, I did have the grounding. I, I'm, I was fortunate enough to play in those la- the last dates of some of those great theatres. Yeah. And that, I think, is what's missing today with the, today's would-be young comics, because they, they don't have the chance, as we did, to, to do uh, 12 shows a week, you know, and finesse and hone as you go along. So, well, that didn't work. Let's try something next show, you know. They don't have that. Every night for them is an opening night. So as you said, you, you prefer the theatre then, so it's, with the albums and singing and your uh, TV work. Well, yeah, that's why people say, I mean, what are you going out on tour for, you know? Why, why are you going all that? Until you get on a live stage, until you hear that roar of laughter and the appreciation of good musicians and...